Hey guys, what's up? By Zach the Tron here from One Hype Gazette, here with the next video, and this is another episode of fails for you guys from the One Hive War. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about it in the recap that should come out the next day tomorrow, um, but I should have everything recorded in time and should have seen a lot of attacks from this war, both good attacks, which we'll see later, and bad attacks, which we'll see today, and we'll talk about why they didn't work and all that good stuff, as we do in every one of the fabulous fail videos. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about the war right now. I'll give my two cents on it uh, once uh, the recap comes around. Uh, for this video, let's get right into the attacks, starting with, uh, we'll just go right into here, uh, starting with uh, Sazuk on number five. And uh, this is a dip attack that happened pretty early on. We like to get these taken care of towards the uh, I wouldn't say the beginning, but not but not too late in the war either, because uh, we want to get these out of the way if we can. And typically, the expectation is that the Town Hall 11s can uh, can come down and fresh three-star these Town Hall 10s, but a lot of time, it's actually harder than it might seem. Um, I think Sazuk, there was, I think, two things that I saw in this attack that could have been done differently. Um, the funneling was good. Maybe it took a, t a few too many bowlers to do the funneling, but regardless, he uh, he got everything taken care of that he needed to. Nice second layer of funneling, uh, so everything's going into the base, the bowlers and the witches, uh, which are both known for walking if they're not funneled correctly. I think the uh, the warden's ability was much too way too early. Um, there was damage in the area, but I just think he could have held in there a little bit longer. His troops weren't dying quite yet. Oftentimes, when they're still in a big bunch, uh, they're just not dying quite as quickly as they would be a few seconds later. Um, the second thing is that jump that he drops right right there. Um, he's leaving this entire island to point defense. Um, not going to be targeted. The queen can't reach it, really. Um, nothing's really going to target it, naturally, but uh, it still can target a lot of his troops. So I think that was two things. Kind of the... Uh, I, I get that he's trying to get in there, get that second Inferno Tower taken care of, but I just think if he had... Um, um, let the jump open up a little more, uh, a little more of the base, or come in at a different angle. Maybe I know sometimes it's hard to get both the inferno towers uh, in your push with just two jumps, but I feel like he could have done it a little bit differently and uh, accounted for that kind of island in the base up towards the top because that's a significant amount of point defense, which can be pretty deadly. Um, so you can see we'll fast forward. His troops kind of petered out on that last inferno tower. They got it taken out, but they couldn't get much else. Um, so nice try there. Uh, it's too bad when this happens, but, you know, we've had fails on both sides for dip attacks. Nothing is certain. Um, we had a few successful, too, as well, though. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our next one. Um, we have Boom Shakalaka on number three, Duce, I think. And uh, this is, I just want to say ahead of time, this is a very good uh, Town Hall 11 base right here. It's great for defending against... Uh, against two-star attacks by Town Hall 10s. You can th see the air defenses are protected for dragon attacks, which have become more popular. Um, it's kind of hard to queen walk. The Inferno Towers are both near the Town Hall, as is the Eagle, but they're not too close together. It's hard to path Valks. That's a huge thing. These ring bases are great for defending two-stars because it's hard to path Valks. Now, right here, um, this attack was very good. I think uh, especially, if I can just pause right here, um, sorry about that, but especially the Witches, which are something that we didn't think we'd see at Town Hall 10, I don't think, especially on two-star attacks, but he uses four witches, which I th think uh, work out nicely and complement the bowlers very well. Um, so everything goes well. The queen, uh, she probably could have been dropped somewhere closer to the center because on attacks like these, typically it's going to be the queen taking out the Town Hall, especially because it's protected by walls. You need something that can shoot over the walls, which could be the bowlers, but typically you need your queen to lock on, and she does right there. What I want to know is why he didn't drop a few minions like right here or you know right here. Take out a few buildings before the attack even starts. Um, he definitely could have sacrificed maybe six troop space to bring three minions, maybe two minions and a few archers. Drop those guys down at the beginning of the attack. You can't do it at the end because the eagle is typically still up and it can take out anything on the map. But if he did it at the beginning, he definitely would have got that 50%. Um, I just think people don't do that enough. When you are doing a two-star attack, 
uh, that percentage could come down to it. And sometimes there's a few buildings on the outside of the base that you know you won't get with your kill squad. Um, why not just at the beginning, you have time, drop in a few archers, drop in a few minions, something, get, you know, six, seven uh, percentage of the base taken out. That way, if it comes down to it, you have that percentage to get the two stars. So just kind of my opinion there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is... Um, Nishia or something. I don't know how to pronounce that. Maybe just some random letters. Uh, taken on uh, 13 right here. Um, this is a Town Hall 10 versus Town Hall 10. And uh, it's on these lower level bases. Not always this low level. This is a pretty low level Town Hall 10. But typically on the lower level bases that we see our own Town Hall 10s trying to get the, the uh, 3 star. Because uh, it's very difficult to 3 star a max Town Hall 10 at this point in the game. Um, so these are the kind of bases that might have made the difference had we 3 starred them. Would have had a better chance at winning the war. Uh, but anyway, he's coming in here with a hog attack, which one thing you got to be very careful about is looking on this base, it definitely opens itself up to hogs because of how everything's kind of situated. There's a lot of, um, oh, had the symbol come up for a second, the Wi-Fi symbol. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, not a whole lot of giant bomb locations. Everything's kind of compact. The defense is a little bit lower level, which helps. But one thing you got to keep in mind is that the spring traps can be a huge issue. And there's a lot of good places to put spring traps if he uses hogs. Um, you got to figure that there's uh, some between the Teslas. There's some between these little gaps and defenses all around here uh, on both sides of the base. Those are definitely an issue. Um, another thing that's probably, you know, it's hard to avoid spring traps, but right here, um, you typically don't want to be going down kind of a skinny uh, compartment like this where there's lots of places your troops can kind of stray. The queen is kind of going towards the bottom here. Luckily, she will come back inside the base eventually uh, back towards the middle and take out the inferno and the defensive queen. But uh, as a rule of thumb, you don't want to have your troops kind of traveling down these long skinny compartments because it's very hard to predict the pathing and especially bowlers can get very wacky on you if they're spread out. So here come the hogs. I uh, was dropping down a few on each of these defenses. Uh, the queen is going to start taking some of these out. So I think these might've been a little bit early. Uh, pops the queen's ability right there. Uh, she'll get the Tesla, the, uh, um, the Inferno Tower, the Defensive Queen. Here comes the main force, has that nice freeze, uh, which is good. You want to you know, have the freeze, typically if there's one Inferno left up. Goes ahead and uses a Haste, which uh, I might have used a Skelly spell, maybe to kill the Defensive Skeletons, but uh, the Haste worked okay, I guess. And there's that heal, but you'll see, I think right here he's going to lose, or on, on the front end between those Teslas, he lost a few to Spring Traps. Then right here, it's very difficult for the Hogs alone to take out a base. Um, you know, even when these defenses are a little bit lower level, uh, typically you kind of need everything going in in conjunction. You need the uh, the kill squad kind of going in and the hogs going in shortly after to kind of back up one of the flanks. Uh, when things are tanking for each other, that's typically the best solution. You don't want to have it at Town Hall 9, which you, you can kind of do at Town Hall 9 more, is where you have... Um, kind of two different phases. Uh, Town Hall 10 isn't as much phase-based attacks. It's more of kind of things leading into each other, um, trying to get tanking value for two different parts of different two different different parts of the attacks. I'm, I'm kind of explaining this poorly, but uh, hopefully you guys can kind of get the point there. You want kind of things going simultaneously uh, because the bases have so much uh, defensive power. Anyway, though, uh, next attack here is Puka or Puka. Um, and this space is a little bit deceptive. I think he was trying to bite off too much with his kill squad. Now, he does have very high-level heroes, the 30 queen, the, uh, what's that, 28 king. So that is uh, definitely a plus, but a few things. First of all, you don't want that golem just to be targeted by the queen. She does much more damage than the archer towers or anything like that. So typically, if you can still drop those golems down, create the funnel, but do it in a way that your golems don't take damage from the queen, keep them out of range, because that first golem's pretty much already exploding by the time everything's entering the base. So not the best situation there. Um, but anyway, the Tesla farm doesn't help, but still, those two air defenses are pretty deep in the base. It's a little bit ambitious to think on a compact base like this, you can get both taken out, especially this one back here, because keep in mind, the king, uh, that he can't get it, the golems can't get it. You need something that can shoot over the wall, 
um, and it's going to be the queen, but there's no way of knowing which way your queen's going to go. In this case, she goes off to the right side, so nothing will get that second air defense taken out. If you are in a situation, actually that wizard gets a few shots on it, which was kind of lucky, but it doesn't get it down. But if you are in a situation where you're trying to get two air defenses taken out and the jump spell doesn't connect the air defenses, you better be pretty certain your queen's going to step up. You better be able to predict her pathing to a certain extent and uh, be able to say, yeah, my queen will be able to step up and reach that because if the golems, if the king, the king's barbarians, if they can't reach it, uh, the queen and possibly some wizards or bowlers if you have them, uh, he doesn't have bowlers though, um, which makes it even trickier, but typically it's just going to be your queen that's able to, to uh, take out the air defense if it's back behind some walls. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the balloon... Was, the balloon part was kind of compromised a little bit by that air defense still being up. Too much to chew off on this base uh, for the Laloon part of the attack. So it doesn't get the job done. But I think the uh, the kill squad, some kind of adjustment or possibly a different strategy might have worked better on this base. So anyway, uh, we'll take a look at one more Town Hall 9 attack as we back out here. Um, let's see. All the way down, we have Iceman, his second attack. Um... This one, I wanted to show a fail with the uh, the P.E.K.K.A. Valk healer. I don't, I don't know what to call it, but it's a very powerful strategy. But I want to show kind of how it can fail. And uh, one thing that goes wrong right away is the funneling. Now, typically, we see this strategy on more spread out bases. I think the reasoning is because you don't want to have to invest a lot of jumps and stuff to move your troops around the base. Typically, you want to be able just to have them kind of, you know, make their way through, not have to go through a lot of walls. You want big open compartments. That's why you typically see this base on or this this strategy on those kind of bases. So on a compact base like this, it makes it a little bit trickier. Now, the first problem is that the queen walk doesn't go quite right. I'm not sure what went wrong at the beginning here. It looked like he dropped down some troops for a funnel, then dropped his queen down. I'm not exactly sure what the plan was, but either way, the queen ends up going... Uh, towards that builder's head up there and from there uh, the healers are just going to get destroyed by that air defense. The sweeper is pointed in the right direction to push them back but uh, the, the air defense is definitely going to get some shots off. Uh, you can see at the top here he'll start in with the king, um, some P.E.K.K.A.s, I think he'll drop those healers down on the uh, on everything up right up there. He doesn't do a great job creating a funnel really, it's just kind of everything going down at once here uh, but there's the wizard finally a little bit late, kind of was close. Uh, there's some wall breakers which end up going down actually he wanted to get them in by that wizard tower but they're actually going to go in a little bit higher up around 12 o'clock um not sure what effect that had on the attack probably not that big of a deal to be honest um but there go the bowlers stepping up um a few of them will go inside the base uh, i think actually most of them or no a few of them do a few of them don't pretty much uh but the pekka's everything is moving in there's just so much damage and when your troops get spread out especially you can really see that this strategy is not you know it cannot overpower a base in every circumstance especially when you know the queen walk doesn't go the best doesn't get the most value um and then the the thing the uh pekkas the valks the king all those troops uh they don't have easy access to the base there's a lot of walls to go through and they get spread out pretty easily um, because the pathing isn't that predictable when you have walls coming into play um, so that's basically it kind of makes the strategy not quite as powerful as it is on most bases uh, some nice attack to Iceman um, or nice plan I should say just didn't quite go correctly I think had the queen walk uh, gotten more value in the uh, the wall breakers gone in he might have had a better chance I don't want to say his, his you know the attack wasn't a good plan just because the uh, some a few things went wrong, I would like to see it how it actually was planned to happen and whether that would be enough to take out the base. But anyway, that's gonna pretty much do it for this video. I uh, hope you guys like seeing some of the fails from this war. I uh, should have a recap out very soon of the of the good attacks, the attacks that went well, and uh, yeah, I'll talk about the war a little more in that video as well and kind of a little bit of the CWL, all that good stuff. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Sectatron out.